Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa. If you're new here, hi, welcome to my channel. I speak about missing children in my channel. I also have a series called Gone Too Soon where I speak about um, celebrities that have gone that have passed away too soon. And I also do a series of missing adults. So today I have three missing adult cases that I'll be talking about today. So go ahead and subscribe and do not forget to um, hit that bell so you get notified every time I upload. Because I do not have a schedule set yet. I will one soon. Also, um, there are some cases that I've been forgetting to mention. Um, I don't know if there's adult cases. But I know that there's cases of some adults. And I think kids as well. But I think it's mostly adults. That they, I don't have their birthdays. They only have the information of the day. Um, of the year that they went. The day and the month and year that they went missing. I do not have their birthday. So if you see or you write, you read the description and it says no birthday. That's because it's just not in, in the, um, in the information. Like the first person I'll be talking about right today, it only has the missing, um, when this person went missing, but it does not have a birthday. So let's go ahead and get started. So Antonio Gomez. It's the first person that we were going to be talking about. Um, he was Hispanic. Um, he went missing at age 56. His height and weight is 5'6", 185 pounds. Um, Hispanic male, black hair, and brown eyes. Gomez was last seen in Waterbury, Connecticut on March 13th of 2006. He has never been heard from again. He says he was... He's, he says he was born in New York City of the Bronx and he had may travel through there after he, he went missing or possibly to Mexico. Few details are available in this case. So the next case that I will be talking about is April uh, Lee Gestrin. Um, she went uh, missing at the age of 20. Her height and weight is 5'4", 120 pounds, black rabbit fur coat, a black shirt, blue jeans, possible stripes, white sneakers, a plain silver ring, a thin silver ring with a turquoise stone and silver earrings, carrying a gray and be being clouched purse with a top zipper um blue cadillac is the vehicle that she was seen in in caucasian female brown hair brown eyes chris shells ears are peers um so i'm just gonna call her april um april was the was last seen on norwalk connecticut in February 1st of 1985 9 p.m the period's day her boyfriend james c purple aaron jr Forced her into a car after they argued in a bar. A few hours later, they were seen arguing at a different bar, leaving at Anthony's Cafe in the 100 block of Main Street at 12.15 a.m. April, accompanied by James, went across the street to use the phone to call for a ride and never returned. A photo of James is posted with this case summary. And when is reported seeing a woman kicking and screaming in his blue Cadillac as he drove away, Aaron drove north in Main Street and then turned left on New Candid Avenue with April in the vehicle still struggling. She has never been heard from again. Her car was later found near Anna Street in the Morwalk River and her wallet was found near a Morwalk school um, half an hour before her disappearance. April told the police she was having an argument with James. One of her fingers was bleeding and she's and she said her assault her. She refused to have him arrested, however, and left with James in his car at 12.30 a.m. He said she got out of his car at a stoplight three blocks away. April mother reported her missing later the, that day. Her wallet with her credit cards, driver license, and birth certificates found abandoned in Norwalk at a month later. James Strange's wife, Mary, Aaron disappeared from her husband, Norwalk, resident in July 1981. He, her skeleton remains were found in a wooden area behind a commuted lot on Route 123 a month later. The cause of death could not be determined, but was presumed to be homicide. James and Mary had been discussing divorce at the time of her disappearance. James was questioned in her disappearance, but no charges were ever filed. According to April's best friend, James was physically abusive towards April and her friend, often saw her with bruises at first april told her friend that james got angry sometimes and she felt his abuse was her own fault for making him angry she later told her mother she was going to break off the relationship and start reporting reporting james abuse to the police she was aware that he had been questioning mary's death 
but said she couldn't imagine that he had killed her. Later on February 1985, James was charged with kidnapping and a harmful restraining in April's case. He pled guilty to second degree kidnapping and unlawful restraint and served nearly six years in prison before his release in December of 1991. Um, April's mother filed a lawsuit against him for injuries her daughter suffered in the kidnapping and the suit was settled in 1992 for $50,000 and in 1989, 87, uh, April family filed a lawsuit against the Norwalk Police Department, alleging they had ignored her domestic violence complaints on January 15th and January 31st of 1985, and also took no action when when a woman from one of the bars April's and James had been to that night called them to say a woman was being beaten and abducted. The lawsuit was settled in 1994. April has never been located, but she has been declared legally dead. James died of natural causes in 2016 at the age of 65. While serving time in unrelated charges, he remains the prime suspect in her presumed murder. I do not want to see no judgment on... If you leave a comment on this video, I do not want to see judgment on April. You do not know what how hard it is for some a woman... Or not even a woman, because sometimes it, women do abuse men. It could go both ways. But you don't know how hard it is for people like this to get out of a relationship. Obviously, she knew about his estranged wife. Um, but people like him know how to manipulate the situation. They know what to say for you to believe them. And who knows what he said. They like to... People like James likes to play the victim. They like to make themselves a victim. Um, and it breaks my heart to know that April said, was telling her friends, it's, no, it's my fault. You know, he, he does it because I it's my fault. It's never your fault. When somebody gets mad at you, they should not be touching you. They should not hit you. And you should not blame yourself. And I'm glad that the family did sue the, the police. Because if you get a call from someone at a bar. And they're telling you, hey, I need the cops. There's this woman. This is this, there's this man beating up on his girlfriend. And trying to take her and dragging her to his car. And you don't show up. And then this happens. Yes, it is your fault. Like I don't, I don't think I will ever understand why do cops get called for an emergency and they act like it's not an emergency. Like that to me does not make no sense at all. But I don't want to see no comments, rude comments. You don't know what it is until you, unless you've been in it. So the last one I'll be talking is about Aileen J. I'm hoping I say her name wrong. Right? Uh, she went missing at age 26, 27. Uh, her height and weight is 5'11 or 5'2, 110, 225 pounds. A tweety sweet suit and raincoat carrying a recycled toe bag. Um, female brown hair, brown eyes. Uh, Jay left her Norwalk, Connecticut home on February 7th of 1983. She had lost her job on her job and was desperate about it desperate about it and decided to go to New York City. She packed a bag and went to stay with her friend who lived in the West End Avenue near 100th Street in New York City. According to Jay's friend, she stayed it for five days and during this time they did not argue and Jay did not mention plans to leave when her friend returned home from work on February the 13th. However, Jay was gone. She has never been heard from again. Norway police are investigating Jay's disappearance. Her case remains unsolved. This case to me, um, it's when it doesn't have a lot of information, it's really hard. I mean, and when you do lose a job, it you do get dip, you know, it, it it hits you, especially like if you enjoyed your job, like it really does hit you. Um, I wonder if she let somebody in or or what it, with these type of cases when they don't have that much information, it is really hard to come to a conclusion or even try to figure out or you know try to figure out if what happened you know 
so yeah guys that's it for today i hope you have a great wednesday wednesday today's wednesday <laughs> i hope you have a great wednesday i do appreciate y'all don't forget to subscribe and turn that bell so you can be notified every time i upload